Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy and this is a custom ACL workshop. And in today's video, what I want to cover is taking a look at ACL's new release, 11.4. It's getting my first impressions and my thoughts and maybe testing out some of the additional features and functions. I read through the pre-release notes about a week ago, so I was pretty excited uh, for some of the new releases that are available in 11.4. So first thing, first off, I've opened up ACL 11.4. I just downloaded it a couple minutes ago. And it has this fresh new interface, which I which I really like, and it's interesting. So it shows you all your recent files. Kind of wish you could delete. Uh, I know in some applications, maybe to find later, you could uh, delete showing what's in your history just in case you have anything private or in this case, is, these are all stuff I do for school or for these videos, so it's no big deal here. You have some sample files, which are which are interesting. I click on one of them. It's my first time clicking on it. So it probably comes with the, if I were to look in where ACL is installed, it probably has these projects already. Oh, that's that's cool. That's interesting. That's good for training. Uh, quite useful uh, to take a look. Uh, yeah, that's good. So let me just open up ACL again. So you have some sample files here. You go to Launchpad, which I think is cool and interesting. Obviously, it's pretty easy to go to Launchpad anyways. Before, but it's good to have in the open guide. It has the help and training, which I'm sure takes you to some of the guides and tutorials and training material and the very useful forums. So if any of you are using ACL, you have any problems that you're stuck with, just post it on the ACL forum. Really great. Some really bright individuals have posted there a couple times, uh, but really useful and some cool and creative techniques that are, are available. Not every problem can be solved because some of them are outside the functionality or purpose of ACL, but still really neat. Uh, again, you can create a new project, you can create a new workflow, which brings you to uh, the online GRC tool. So if you have ACL GRC, which I'm hoping one day to try out and test out because I think it would be useful and interesting, especially if you're in risk management, if you're in internal audit, or you're in some other similar functions or compliance, it's a seems like a great nifty tool you can open up open up acl analytics packages and also up uh, analytics apps and i'm hoping in a future video maybe in a couple months to start creating some videos on the analysis app which i think is pretty useful as well so that looks cool it tells you uh what license model you have you see here this is from the university of waterloo education one so i appreciate acl uh providing support on that and support uh with the university of waterloo and myself. So anyways, continue on. You'll see that there's some functions and features that are available here uh, that they discuss. So they talk about how now it's a single installer for non-Unicode and Unicode. You can just select the option. If you're doing an upgrade, it's just going to default it uh, and just going to gray out. The other options only allow you to select which one you have. And this one I have non-Unicode for, for this particular purpose. Uh, it talks about here, Korean and Polish are no longer available interfaces that doesn't really affect me uh, for 11.4 but it's available for 11.3 uh, so there's some I'm not going to talk so much about the GRC because I don't have access to it and have played around with it enough but I'm going to go down to the some of the enhanced features so now you can summarize and classify on numbers which is interesting I'm looking forward to this I guess this kind of sometimes defeats the need to because one of the main reasons why you had to select when you import something as character or numeric is so that you can classify and summarize it. So if you had like um, code, like classification code, product code, oftentimes that'd be a number uh, or product group. And that may be a number like 2000, 3000, uh, but you would want to import that as, as, in, as a character so you can classify and summarize. So I'm going to test that out in a little bit. Uh, the field names can now be up to 256 characters. Also applies to AX and add-ins. Previous was 31 characters. This is a huge upgrade. And uh, maybe it's me not naming tables properly, but I've ran into this issue a number of times where I've tried to name a table because I have like a whole bunch of different scenarios that I'm applying to this analysis. And uh, it ends up being more than 31 characters and it cuts it off. And it says this table already exists because I've tried another one. But now that's 256, still obviously not go too out of hand on this one but it's a really useful useful uh, addition here 
additional feature. I'm looking forward to trying that out in a bit. Uh, but I also foresee some per perhaps some backwards compatibility issue if you write some scripts in 11.4 and you have another colleague that's in 11.3 or below and some of your tables are too long, it may mess up. But I'm sure they've thought about that. Expressions can now be up to 8,188 characters. Previous limit was 1,023. I didn't find that too much of an issue. Uh, same with the next one. If in wild conditions can be now 4,094 characters long. Again, I didn't see too much of an issue here. Uh, individual conditions. Again, a condition being more than 255 characters. It's definitely possible, but... I haven't really ran into that scenario too often, maybe in the one future, so it's good to have those those upgrades. And we talked about the sample data, now including some sample projects and sample data, which I think is uh, really useful, and the old ones are still there. XML importer has improved, so that can support larger importing larger files, which I actually, in some instances, when I have used XML files, I did find it a little bit slow, but now that's a useful upgrade, and Perhaps in a video, I'll demonstrate that one. I don't think I'll demonstrate it in this particular scenario because I don't have any XML files that are readily available. PDF importer uh, has now some additional options for different parsers, so I'm interested in doing that. I've created, I think, two videos, maybe just one, on how to import PDF files in ACL, so I'll be interested in seeing uh, what those additional parsers are. Online top talkers for print and PDF importers have been reamped, including specific workarounds for importing misaligned data. So that's a pretty uh, tough scenario. Um, and as well, some other additional ones. I won't get into it. Some other errors that have been now corrected. But let's go ahead and get started. And let's start off with summarizing and classifying on numeric fields. So let's try out their project that they've created so you'll see that we have this merchant code let's see what merchant code is uh, merchant code is a character but let's see if we can modify I don't modify fields too often like this so I'm not overly familiar with this so now it's numeric let's see how well it does so I'm gonna try classifying on it oh beautiful that was very simple and very useful let's see if we can summarize on it this is, I could see some people making some bad coding choices because I still think you should uh, correctly define this as a character or an ASCII or Unicode, depending on which version you're using. Uh, but no, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, it's still a very useful feature, and there may be reasons why you would want to classify it. Maybe you want to figure out what the most common amount is. Obviously, you can run statistics on that or some run some other features, but that's really useful and in really handy um, like here for example if you look at unit costs maybe it gives you some instances of what are very prevalent unit costs and which ones are surprising and which ones are not so that's I find that fantastic it's a um, that's a really useful feature and I think that's that's great same with quantity it gives you a really good sense of the range of data and how prevalent something is I wish there was a I'm sure we could graph this Okay, that graph's not overly appealing, but I'm not sure what you can expect from from uh, from numerics where there's many numbers in between and it's really a continuous variable that you're trying to transform as a discrete. But I think that's a big plus and uh, I'm very grateful that ACL has, has made that upgrade because I think that's super useful and I know some other applications have already done that. So it's good to see, see that upgrade. So now you can name tables uh, up to 256 characters when previous limit was 31. Again, I think this is super useful. All right, let's test it out here. Let's go extract fields all to say test one, two, three, four, nine. So I'm going to add nine here. So I already have 13, 22, 31. So this would have been the limit before. Let's go to 40. Let's go to 49 just in case. Let's see what happens. Perfect. That's great. And let's check out the log to make sure that's captured it appropriately. That's great. Like that's uh, honestly like when you when you first start out, it's not really that big a deal. But when you actually go out and test out and you're writing a lot of code and scripts and you get this error saying like 
this table already exists or we don't know what table you're talking about uh, can be really frustrating and you have to revise your code and you might have a bunch of nuances that you need to take care of so uh, that's that's great and I, re I really enjoy uh, that the fact that they've made those upgrades uh, these other three I haven't really encountered in my day-to-day -day, so I'm not too worried about those ones again we're playing around with some sample data which I think is useful really handy for training I think is going to provide a lot of the good insights to to new users even old users that want to up upgrade and and um, improve their skills XML importer has been improved so I'll, I'll leave that because I don't have any maybe for another video if you guys really want me to cover it how to import through xml uh, more than happy to do it uh, just leave a comment in the comment section below we'll definitely cover that if that's of interest uh, pdf importer now has now has options of using different parsers when performing the import uh, with some pdf files switching parsers may have provide better import results and this is a i would say really important still I think we're starting to get better and hopefully we'll continually improve uh, getting access to better quality data uh, and we won't need to import PDFs but in some instances those are the only option that you have uh, because that's the only access of data that you can get maybe it's because of their service provider and they don't want to give you access to data or there's just too much time and effort to go another route uh, but hopefully we'll get to the point where we don't need to do that uh, but for now the fact that we do let's go ahead and try to um, import some data so I'm gonna go to file new table I'm gonna go next and I'm gonna go put the path of where I've put the data so here I have this Royal stats have a video importing this but so let's just check it out give some first impressions so pretty straightforward Okay, that's interesting. I'm not too familiar with uh, this different these different parts. So let's go back and forth, check them out. So I'm gonna try to import this sub. Let's try to import this category first. Let's call this uh, category. Uh, that will always appear and locate near. Okay. Let's go here. Um, let's go alpha. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, one thing that I would really like is that when, when you're doing it, it kind of shows you what's being highlighted. I know some maybe there's some other instances that it would show you. But if we continue along this, and I make this numeric, um, let's just call this amount 2014. Also, wish that one of the field names would would uh, would mess up when it's numeric. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, nothing too different here but maybe if i try very pdf do you wish to proceed okay let's go ahead and try it again let's call this category again this is custom map yeah i'm not actually too sure what was different here i guess you can this even this group is um pretty similar to last time so i'm not exactly sure what's what's different uh between these these parsers um maybe uh someone from acl can give me some more details by the way like the acl pdf import is pretty powerful uh and is probably one of the more useful ones when I compare it to some of the other ones that are available on the market. So that's really my uh, first impression of ACL 11.4. Uh, if you guys like these videos, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. And if you guys have any questions or any other topics that you want me to cover, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.